This is a HeadGum Podcast. Monday, November 28th. OMG. We're almost in December. I can't wait. My favorite month of the year. <laughs> Hanukkah and Christmas together at last. <laughs> Going face to face, head to head for the first time ever. Uh, but before that, let us thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Thank you, Squarespace. Did you know that Squarespace allows you to build websites uh, despite the fact that you may or may not know anything about programming and designing? Huh? Yeah, that's right. They have simple, intuitive processes built in that you can just drag and drop, arrange your content, and with a click of the mouse, the website is born. Nice snap. Thanks, bro. They have beautiful templates so you don't need to know design. They have seamless commerce tools. They have customer support 24-7, so if anything messes up, uh, which is sort of your fault at this point, mm-hmm. uh, of course. then you can call or email them and they will get back to you. And not only that, but if you sign up for a year of Squarespace, they'll throw in a free custom domain for a year. That's very, very You very don't have to worry about buying and transferring and hosting and all that stuff. That shit's hard to do. So what are you thinking? You're thinking that there are no free custom domain names available because Actually, every yeah. name no, is are. taken. No, there we, we find some. We find some every time we endorse Squarespace. For example, the following domain name is available, Jake. You guys, Squarespace, as Amir stated, has some of the most beautiful, elegant tools for you to make a, 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 just a dynamic, stunning website. <laughs> and what better URL for your amazing new website to be than eatmybooger.com? That's available. Yes. Wow. And what do you imagine is on eatmybooger.com? Um, I think you could make it sort of like an e-zine for different <laughs> boogers. Uh, okay. So you would have people uh-huh. submit pictures of... Right. Of big, right. ripe boogers that right. they find and dig out of their nose, right. crusty, right. gooey, Got it. bloody. Got it. Uh, and then you have images, okay. close <laughs> a gallery of <laughs> boogers. More than yeah. anything. And then the, uh, well, the, and the images, images, like we said, are just, they're amazing. All right. They're Mine so sharp. Is called they're so, excuse Windef- me, one second, because you can Mine also make called- an online store with Squarespace. <laughs> and I yeah. will say that you can yeah. auction and purchase awesome. these Thank boogers. So and that way people are okay. eating other people's Great. Boogers, if you like to great, eat boogers great, great. and you haven't had your fill <laughs> my name, and you want to eat all of your boogers URL and some is, other people's boogers, yeah. you can buy them on eatmybooger.com. Great. Thank you. Mine is windefinitely.com. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How many boogers are part of that website? Uh, windefinitely. So when something good is happening indefinitely, you say it's happening windefinitely. That's really dope. <laughs> and it's a word that you made up, but it's fun to say. It's fun to spell. It's windefinitely.com. Uh, and you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com. And if you enter the offer code, if I were you, you get 10% off your first purchase. So low prices, promo code, if I were you, 10% off, and you can just start a free trial today. So you don't have to, uh, give any money before you make your decision. Everything is at Squarespace. So if you ever find the need to build your own website, whether it's eatmybooger.com or windefinitely.com or something Two great somewhere options. in between, uh, check them out. Squarespace, set your website apart. Ciao. Uh, let's get right into this episode. Of course, things got real. We're full of turkey. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, great theme song. Listen to this. If I were you, I'd tell you what I'd do. I know a way to make a better sit down and write a letter to your two favorite Jews. And if you were me, I know just how you'd be. Have a sticky situation and a little tamerization, some problems with your family. Oh, this is the Game Boy here to help you make your whole life. Oh, well, I hope of all the questions they pick mine, they pick mine. <laughs> Damn, Daniel. That was really good. Voice of an angel on that, man. That guy is Jesse Gold, who I believe we've used his theme songs many a time. We met him one time in Toronto. Yeah, and I ran into him in Santa Monica. He's as cool as the name Jesse Gold would lead you to believe, plus his music. Like kind of cool and kind of Jewish? Yeah, exactly. In the middle. Yeah, Jesse is a great, cool Jewish name. Yeah, so if you want to like... Gold is a cool Jewish last name. Yeah. Do you think names have 
a lot to do with who you turn out to be? Like, if your name was Moisha, do you think you'd be cool? I bet not. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's like the first really big executive decision your parents make in f- molding your future. Yeah, it's true. Will you be a Jesse or a Moisha? <laughs> Those <laughs> are parents, the only two options. Your parents wanted you to be a Moisha. That's why they named you Shmuel. <laughs> and I, I begged and pleaded as a six-day-old for the name. G- at least give me an ambiguously Jewish name like Amir that I can overcome in some capacity. They said, fine, Shmuel for middle. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Jesse Gold. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram and everywhere else at Jesse Gold Music. That's it. At Jesse Gold Music. Dope. Uh, you know that song, Wagon Wheel? So um, rock me, me mama, mama, like a wagon wheel. wheel. Yeah. Ro- yeah. Is that like a popular song that a bunch of people do, or is that like a Darius Rucker song? I believe the story of that song is that it's an old Bob Dylan song. Oh. But then it, it was made popular by like old crow medicine something oh should, even newer or yeah like older they covered the bob dylan song because it wasn't a popular or even finished bob dylan song oh really I and then they just like we'll take it and we'll finish they, it yeah and then i now i think it's like it was such a popular cover that everyone's covering floodgates it, are open is what i think Oh, Mama Rock Me. Great song. That's my parody request of the week. If you have a wagon wheel, uh, if I were you, show Ooh, cover. Nice. Uh, all right. What is this show? This show is a podcast show. Podcast obviously. Podcast me, Mama. Like it's got real. real. Oh, that's really yeah. good. <laughs> oh, podcaster it's me. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I'm not the artist. I'm you just the are. host. <laughs> so see if you can make it better. You figure it out. That's me throwing the lyrics at a intern that has a guitar in his hand. He doesn't know how to play. It doesn't matter. Uh, this uh, is a, an advice podcast. So the way it works is that you download it with a podcast app or you can stream the audio live on your computer. You can hear us talk. And the way it works is that the way the things that we say are so kind of entertaining and kind of humorous yeah. that it makes uh, pedestrian or boring uh tasks or obligations seem yeah. to fly your, by in your a faster commute way or your workout right so like let's say you're washing dishes uh, that's usually where i go to and it seems it's a mundane well, or tedious that, do you, task do you listen to podcasts while you're washing dishes i don't okay yeah uh, but you think other people might yeah i think they might but you when do you listen to podcasts most Ooh, good question uh driving i would say so you, all right. so you listen to podcasts most when you're driving. Mm-hmm. But the example for someone listening to a washing podcast dishes. is washing dishes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so you're washing a dish and uh, you're listening to us talk. And I guess in, a, in an ideal way, it makes you laugh and it makes you happy and it makes you smile. That's what a podcast is. Yeah. And this specific one is us answering people's questions. People are often confused in life. We say you can ask us about anything you want. Any advice you need, Jake and I are proud and humbled to give it. Ninety mm-hmm. percent of the time, it's relationship advice, just because that's what people are most confused about. But we'll take anything at this point. That's true. Uh, if you have your own questions or maybe even your own theme song submissions, the email address for everything is if I were you show at gmail dot com. For this episode, I found a couple questions. You found a couple questions. I wonder if we found the same questions. Oh, I did not think that far ahead. No, we did not. Which leads us to the first theme of the podcast. We are sort of adult children. We don't <laughs> ca- often think ahead. That's why our ad- our show is called If I Were You That's and right. not Good Advice from Therapists. Right. <laughs> Which is a much more boring but probably intellectual podcast that you should also subscribe to. So do you have any questions called FWBFTW? No. All right, so why don't we start with that one that I found from a lady, right. uh, a sophomore in college. You want to give this lady a fake name? Just yeah. so we can refer to her while still preserving her anonymity. This is really for people who've never heard the show yeah. before, huh? <laughs> this is Not a single for, inside for... joke for the rest of this time, guys. <laughs> this is... So get all your hat, your day one, <laughs> your Josh and Vance, the pinch... That's out, all right? Yes, dude. Yes, dude. This is like the end of the Terminator where he sort of morphs into everything. <laughs> yes, Seize dude. Seize the cheese, Seize the dude. Cheese, dude. Rah, day one hack, Kanye Goose. Hashtag dope. <laughs> all right. This lady's called Kenzie Boner. 
Nice, dude. Yeah. Uh, listen up, it's Diva Roach. Boner is a silly word, and Kenzie's a well, yeah. dumbass I mean, name. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we're just slighted by somebody named Kenzie. <laughs> somebody at the gym just beat sucks. you up. <laughs> this one's called Kenzie, and I beat the shit out of him. I know it's a lady. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Uh, Kenzie Boner writes, I'll get right to the point. I'm a sophomore in college, and I lost my virginity two months ago. What up? <gasps> I had been waiting for the one, but then I got horny. Oh. <laughs> you never want to be horny. <laughs> There's only one way to alleviate the horniness. So, about three weeks ago, I started a friends with benefits relationship, but due to scheduling conflicts, we were only recently able to have sex about a week ago. So the second time we boned, he ended up sleeping over, and we cuddled throughout the night. Now, I chose this guy for a reason. We don't agree on many fundamental issues, so I know we wouldn't make a good couple. However, after the cuddle session, I realized I'm starting to miss intimacy. So should I A, ditch this dude and wait for someone special? B, continue this friends with benefit relationship that teeters on the line of a real relationship? You know, text throughout the day, cuddle session, sleepover, goodbye kisses. Mm -hmm. Or C, lie to myself about not actually needing intimacy and continue this friends with benefits relationship while avoiding those constant text snaps sleepovers and cuddle sessions thanks love the show i'm a day one baby i don't know what that means <laughs> there are no inside jokes anymore uh okay so i don't understand her three uh options maybe some of them are like overlapping Let's pretend like you don't have these three options. You could do whatever yeah, you want. I fucking hate multiple choice. Yeah. All right? This is my life, my show. <laughs> well, it's her life, your show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Still one out of two, I bet. Uh, so she's in a friends with benefits relationship, and she's like, wait, maybe I do kind of like, I miss cuddling and intimacy. So should I, what should I do? Should I ditch this dude for someone special or just continue on this thing and pretend like I don't give a shit about the intimacy? And I, there's not an option of her being intimate with this guy because they don't agree on anything. Yeah, they don't agree on many fundamental issues, so we wouldn't make a good couple. For instance, I like him and he doesn't like me. <laughs> That's the biggest fundamental issue in every relationship. What are your thoughts on me? Uh, let's say, I think if she... It sounds like she wants something more than a sexual relationship. So since she got her horniness uh, quenched... yeah. She might as well forget about this dude for a bit and try to find a boyf. Yeah, is or she can she or she can continue with this dude while she looks for the boyf. Yeah, that's the nice thing about friends with benefits. They're kind of low stakes. Yeah, it's either it's this or nothing while you look for a boyf. So if this is better than nothing at all, then right. you can just continue doing it while you look for a boyf. This is like sex and no intimacy. Yeah. Uh, but then searching for a boyf is, boyf is no sex <laughs> and no intimacy. Right. So you might as well have the sex if you enjoy the sex. And the intimacy if you enjoy the boyf. <laughs> Coming up on NBC's The Boyf. Uh, what are your thoughts on cuddling after a random one night stand esque hookup? Oh, I love it. My oh, favorite. you love it. Yeah. So it's even great. if even if it's like a one night stand thing, and you're like, I'm never going to see this person again. Sometimes especially, I like, love to have like a girlfriend for the night. <laughs> so like spooning, hugging, kissing in the yeah. middle of the night, kissing in the kisses. cheeks. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, uh, all right, uh, bye forever. If I had it my way, I would like also be able to say I love you during a one night stand. <laughs> But it really confuses people when you never see them again after that. So <laughs> I learned that the medium way. Uh, I'm definitely down for. I, I like cuddling. I'm a cuddler. And then, do you have you ever been like uh, the victim of someone who's like, "All right, I gotta go," and you're like, "Wait, but don't you want to stay and cuddle?" Like, yeah, she's but like, no, that, no, this was a a hit and run of sorts. When stuff when like that's happened, like somebody's like, "All right, I'm gonna go home." Like you know, you can sleep here. It's like, no, that's okay. Yeah, I'm usually like. That's fine, too. That is an interesting rule some people have. Like, I'm not sleeping over. I don't like sleeping over. Well, although some people, it's more, not a rule, but more like they, they're they not comfortable. They don't get comfortable. They, they're unable to sleep in other people's beds. Yeah, and that's fine. I think that the rule for that is always like, if the person wants to fuck and leave, that's kind of like, that's got to be fine. Mm -hmm. But like, you can't just kick someone out of your house mm. after you've brought them home. What if you sleep in their bed? Do you... Are you just assuming I'm sleeping there? 
or oh, do you, you ask know, for permission? I actually, yeah, I don't know if my rule should really check out. I guess it's just it's definitely a case by case basis because I've been in this, <laughs> in a position too where someone was like, uh, "You can go," and I sort of felt like they wanted me to, and I was like, oh, "All right, <laughs> I'm leaving." Then it is Cheers. four twelve though. Uh, Maybe I'll leave at nine thirty. I think this is what everybody hopes out of a one night stand. <laughs> but why does it feel so mean? <laughs> I should go. I'm gonna leave. Can I cuddle you before? <laughs> I love you. I'm yeah. It is funny. It's like you have a basically a girlfriend for the night. It's such a loving way to sleep with someone that, a, that might, in fact, be a stranger. Yeah, you might kiss them goodbye like you're going to work for the thousandth time. It's funny how that's more intimate. Like you can literally, like you know, you penetrate somebody. Yeah, and, and have or have someone enter you. Sure, swapping bodily fluids. <laughs> uh, coming in front of like into someone or on yeah. someone or with someone something that your best like, friends haven't seen the most intimate thing in the world and then like you're you don't want to like stroke someone's hand in the morning <laughs> like oh that's a little too real yeah because once the light comes up the magic is over i i guess i always imagined it was like once i leave the room the magic is over you shut so the like door. in that yeah in this in this room in this cocoon of lovemaking i it's I a think, theater i feel like we're in a relationship <laughs> yeah you're you're maybe walking to the bathroom naked mm -hmm. you're opening oh, yeah. the fridge it's very boyfriendy oh yeah chugging milk oh totally that's nude. good and she's hey. like can you not and then you're like okay here we go wipe my milk mustache <laughs> off belch and say you don't love me anymore yeah you give her a gross kiss and she sort of like laughs and is disgusted at the same time it's very oh, that's cute nice. that's yeah a, that's a movie and then you plop down next to her in the bed and she's like oh shit my mom's calling and then you're like oh let me guess she's asking you about like Aunt oh, I, I know some whatever. really weird like intimate information yeah <laughs> how did you know about my aunt elise uh oh, don't worry quiet kenzie <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't about you uh so in conclusion uh Still have fun. You can have fun with this guy. You don't need to be in a relationship with him. <gasps> but if you find yourself maybe growing too attached, that's when you should cut him off. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, all right. Unless what's... he's getting attached too, then it's kind of like, oh, do we just morph into yeah. the F and GF? Maybe I, that's fine. I wonder how many relationships start with a quote-unquote one-night stand hmm. because that's maybe how the first date goes. And you yeah, don't know if yeah, it's sure. a one-night stand or the beginning of a marriage how many marriages started with a one night stand mm, interesting i thought we were one night and how many wedding speeches <laughs> uh ended with i'm trying to think about my relationships relationships uh and i believe only one of them began that way that's right and of mine one of them did too <laughs> So it's so the rule is one always does. Amazing. <laughs> it's called the one rule. The rule to rule them one. Wait, two of mine did. Oh shit. Sorry. The exception to the rule. <laughs> the exception proves the rule. <laughs> Very good. I have a I've got a relationship question of my own from a lady. <gasps> um oh you mean a lady named Dove Gray? Yeah. That's yeah. a cool name. Yeah. Duff Gray. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at a tab on my computer, and it's, it's that's a, the name of a carpet. It, yeah, yeah, a paint chip. That makes a lot of yeah. sense, too. <laughs> uh, Duff Gray. This is actually more of a sex question than a relationship one. All right, pass. Yeah. Well, come on. Duff Gray writes, Hey, Jake. Hi, Amir. I absolutely adore you guys in the podcast. You seriously make my day. Thanks, Duff Gray. <laughs> <laughs> I have no question. <laughs> I've been seeing a guy for a while now who is really into dirty talk. The problem is, I don't like the word pussy because it sounds gross, yet vagina is too clinical. Do you guys have any tips for dirty talk? And what's a sexy way to, to refer to, you know, my parking space? Hope you guys enjoyed your holiday, Duff Gray. So she's, she has to say it. She, or she wants yeah. to make a rule that he can't say it. The reason I chose this is... Uh, because I think there's a right answer. Oh. I want to see if you get there. And By the way, you that is two different ways to interpret it, and I interpreted it as she wants to say it, and she wants to come up with a different way to say it. Got it. it. Like, I want you to eat or chow down on my yeah, ex. Or my blank is so tight. My yeah. blank is so wet. And she thinks vagina's too clinical and mm -hmm. pussy is too crass. Yeah. Well, you want to say it like, oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> my vagina's so wet. That sounds <laughs> yeah. like some sort of issue yeah um, my pussy's so wet i mean yeah. i still think that sounds hot but maybe i'm completely wrong <laughs> uh so there's a word 
for that, that's in between vagina and pussy. Did Donald Trump ruin pussy for us? <laughs> Is that one of the other fucking things that he did? That's what I'm most mad about, I think. Uh, he, he stole that word from perverts. Uh, uh, so my uh, is so uh, mm, 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 I'm trying to think mm-hmm. um, I'm, uh, now I'm at a complete lo- like I'm just trying to think of any adjective like box is kind of like yeah, really crass too. my twat the, is the worst I think yeah, and like, cunt is bad too right I think slit's the worst <laughs> are you serious yeah, it's, slit I, it's seems so really funny. gross <laughs> <laughs> my slit is so wet. Yeah, you said, wait, did I, I, I'm not saying that's the answer. I'm saying that's the worst. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you yeah. said that's what she should say. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Ew. Christ. Slit, twat, cunt, pussy, vagina, Mom, all Mom, if you're still table. listening, uh, I guess you can just keep it up at this point. Is there We've a, said the worst we could possibly say. Is there a less sexy way to say it than me brainstorming adjectives? Uh, all right, what do you think it is? You don't say it at all, brother. Down there, clit. You don't say it. Oh, you don't say it? No. So it was a trick question. Yeah, dude. So the adjective I couldn't think of was actually the right choice. Yeah, you just talk about other shit. You talk about his shit. You know what I mean? So she Put wants... your cock in me. Like, <laughs> oh, give me that dick. Fuck me. Spank my ass. <laughs> lick my tits. Whatever, you know? But you don't, And I'm so wet. You don't... Like, make... Make the vagina you. Uh-huh. Like, oh, I'm so tight. Is it tight? You know? You don't... <laughs> So it's That's as if the vagina is talking, it, and it's, I'm yeah, exactly. It's though it's so you, you are to, in this moment. You are the vagina. vagina. So two eyes on a little vagina, not unlike some sort of That's animated kind of a oyster. Way to think about it. Yeah. If you are the vagina, then you then you get to say like I'm so wet. You don't yeah. have to say my pussy is wet or my That's vagina right. is wet or my slit is wet or my got it. So like in in this world, she's a cartoon clam, two mm-hmm. googly eyes. Oh, you with could a say that's another one. My clam is so tight for you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's saying, "Ooh, uh, kiss me here," but she actually means her vagina. Yeah, mm-hmm. you say lick it or lick lick me. Ah, yeah. lick me is kind of weird, but that uh, suffice to say, this is obviously the correct answer. So you're saying don't reference your vagina at all. Just don't say it. I want to give her a word, uh, just because she really wants a word. Oh, we gave her the right answer. Uh, you want to give her a word, fine. But yeah, I, yeah. I stand by my, I stand by my answer. So Jake says no word, and I say, down there. I'm so wet down there. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Yeah, that's my suggestion. <laughs> Maybe I guess like if any girl was saying it to me, I'd think it was hot. But you saying it to me, <laughs> my penis just crawled up inside my navel. You just passed the gay test. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was so worried because I've been in a relationship with a man for a long time. <laughs> but I have noticed it's been loveless. Uh, all right, so those are some options. Solid options. That's what I call answers. Uh, we're about halfway through our 20 or 45-minute episode, so why don't we take a break right now, come back with even more Q's and A's. That's great because I have to pee. Perfect. Thank you as well to ZipRecruiter.com for sponsoring this episode. For all y'all listeners who are hiring, and I know there are a few Fortune 500 C at least MOs yeah, checking we got out some, some podcasts. bosses out there. A lot of C blank O's listening to the show. Uh, the C dash O. Uh, ZipRecruiter.com lets you post your job to 100 plus job sites, including Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Mm-hmm. So you can find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. It's basically, you know how the internet's making things that were previously difficult now easy. Yeah. So ZipRecruiter does that for uh, the job search. It's hard to find good people. No we one... saw it low and high for our interns over the summer, and we came up completely empty-handed, it turned out. Save for one dumbass who <laughs> won't leave us alone. Just uh, kidding. I loved all of our interns. You guys were amazing. <laughs> Uh, well, there's no juggling emails or calls to your office. You know how we had to like have many mm-hmm. spreadsheets and things got out of hand pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. ZipRecruiter allows you to quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. So if you go to ZipRecruiter.com, you can post for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash if I were you. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash if I were you to find that right person for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash if I were you. Thank you as well to Lisa for sponsoring this episode. Uh, the joy of a good night's sleep. Is there anything better? Uh, maybe the joy of a good night creep. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you shot me. <laughs> uh, nothing feels better than sleeping in an awesome uh, bed, sleeping with an awesome mattress. And Lisa, we we just we don't take our word for it because Lisa is the highest rated mattress of the new breed of mattresses delivered in boxes. This includes Consumer Reports as well as thousands of customer reviews. I do trust Consumer Reports. I'll give uh, that to you straight up. Their mattresses are inexpensive, and now we have an amazing offer. You can get $75 off the mattress and a $50 Amazon gift card. And this offer ends what? November 30th. Damn, that's over $100. That's right. Uh, the mattresses themselves have been researched and designed for eons, and they've narrowed it down to a three-layer technology and how uh, it's pretty much the most advanced sleep surface known to man. So, how do you get all this good stuff? Let's say you need a mattress. Let's say you need to upgrade your mattress game. Uh, go to Lisa, that's L-E-E-S-A dot com, and use our promo code U, just that word U. Really? That's Y-O-U. It. Love it. Promo code U, Y-O-U. You get $75 off the mattress, uh-huh. $50 Amazon gift card. Okay. Uh, and that's only if you go to Lisa, L-E-E-S-A dot com, and use the promo code U. So, if you're in need for a mattress... This is sort of the day or two to get it because you'll not only get $75 off, but you also get a $50 Amazon gift card. That's good. That's a lot of money back, folks. Uh, and if you're a little concerned about it, don't worry. They have a 100-night risk-free trial. So if you don't love your mattress, they'll pick it up for you for free and refund your money. That's what's up. Low risk, high reward, Lisa, L-E-E-S-A dot com. Promo code? You. Y-O-U. That's right. Uh, all right. I think I'm ready to get back to the episode. How about you? Can't wait, buddy. Let's do it now. And we have returned. Yes, dude. How was your Thanksgiving? It was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> we should say we're recording this before Thanksgiving, but we can have the conversation as if it happened. That's cool. Or did you survive the thing? Uh, no, I died. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Right, I'm dead. Dark. I died over the weekend. <laughs> that. It's going to be so dark if it happens. Dude, can you imagine? The that posthumous would... podcast. I'd want you to run it. Really? Yeah. You mean that, dude? Actually, no. I, I really want you to end the podcast, uh, dilute head gum, give it up, <laughs> chop it into little pieces. Uh, all the podcasts become independent. You stop any uh, like, writing this... projects. <laughs> this is so selfish. Yeah. I just don't want you to succeed without me. I guess then people would be like, oh, Jake might have been holding him, da- holding him back the whole time. Got it. I guess I can start some, like, some, maybe start writing some of my own shit that could well, be, like, a little... No. Like, I wouldn't want you to write anything. <laughs> well, I'm saying, like, maybe I can even write something about your passing or, like, some sort of semi-autobiographical be cool. dark but comedy. Even, yeah. But if even if that, like, went... It would, if that went forward and it, like, was successful, then it would be, like, oh, Amir was a better writer without Jake, and I really wouldn't want anything like that. To I can make it a little worse than, like, I would, I would make, I can even make it a little worse than I would actually make it. Right. So I would make it a little worse, and I would call it your name. I would say to Jake Hurwitz. I would dedicate it to oh. you. So it would be, like, a love letter to you. Yeah. That's kind of cool. But I would really, again, <laughs> I would hate for something to, like. It would be critically panned. <laughs> huh. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, fuck you, dude. Is it just me? Is it just me? Is it just me? Uh, yeah, we're recording this before Thanksgiving, releasing after, so it's tough to say how the holidays were, but you can you can safely estimate that we ate a lot. Yeah. You, oh, you could be like, ugh, I fucking, I feel like I haven't worked out in a few days. Right. Ugh. I tried to get a good workout in today yeah. before we leave. Oh, your last, the, the launch off one. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to bring my, I'm bringing my climbing shoes home. Hopefully I'm going to climb with my brother a little bit. That'd be nice. Yeah. I'm How did that go it. when you climbed with your brother? I ended up only, I was going to, I brought my stuff home. I was going to try yeah. to climb uh, <laughs> two or three times, but yeah. we ended up just climbing once. <laughs> and uh, even then we, it wasn't a good session. <laughs> we just went and got cheeseburgers afterwards. <laughs> cheeseburgers mid Thanksgiving. I would like to, I'm going to go on record and say, I think I will, I'm going to, so I know I'm going to get really drunk on Wednesday. Yeah. Hungover uh, Thursday for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving. Which is good timing. Yeah. You're indoors. You're eating a lot of food. And Guilt-free-ish. Right. Oh, God, I love God. I, I, Thanksgiving's one of the best. Yeah, because it's all food. It's funny. I used to hate Thanksgiving when I was younger. Why? I think because it was like time Family time and from, not yeah, friends. exactly. And now I miss my family. I see my <laughs> friends all the time. <laughs> I'm sick of my fucking friends. Yeah, when I'm doing Thanksgiving, it's just family time. And mm-hmm. we're on like... Go to bed at 10 p.m., wake up at 7 a.m. time. Yeah, so you don't, you're not going to go out on Wednesday night. No, yeah, I have no going out Wednesday night. It's like I'm going to be at 
my brother's house with my nieces, hanging out with them. Just then playing. maybe yeah. Then maybe watching basketball or something. And then if one of them is down, like the eight year old was telling me about this like new club that just opened up in really? downtown San uh, SF. Yeah, yeah. So downtown San Francisco. No way. Yeah. She I does guess she, she knows know? the bouncer. So How? Because she does like gymnastics with his kids. So she's eight. <laughs> Uh huh. And his kids are eight. Yeah. But she like got it. How did she get in good with the bouncer and like know that she needed to get you? Because and... she's like, my dad's a bouncer. Her friend who does right. gymnastics with her is like, my dad's a bouncer at that new club. You're not going to bring her, obviously, to the. No, yeah. It would be me and her. It would be you me and, and her. her. Yeah. And, and then like we would get there. service somewhere? Yeah. Well, I don't even know if we have to pay for the bottle service, but if we get it, like, that's such a plus. Because then we get, like, the VIP table and you can, like, sort so of look. This is your, does your brother, her father, know about this? <laughs> no, we probably won't. It's, like, our little secret type thing. So awesome. we're, like, super hungover the next day. Yeah. Damn. I think this is illegal. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> you guys are both hungover. <laughs> it's funny to imagine an eight-year-old hungover. That ha- that has to have happened, right? Definitely. I don't think it's funny though when it happens. I bet <laughs> it's like probably really, really sad. Because yeah. like when you're hungover now, you know what you did. Yeah. You're an eight year old does. I don't think an eight year old could comprehend like I drank, I made crazy decisions, and now I'm paying for it today. That's like the nice thing about a hangover, right? You're like you can recognize you I, deserve this. Is the this. consequence, the tax. This is, yeah, this is what I'm paying for the fun time. An eight-year-old is probably just like, I feel very sick, and it's so sad. There must be some sort of childlike abuse of parents getting their kids sick uh, or drunk, right? Yeah, definitely. Because like, no six- to eight-year-old would willingly do this uh, drink alcohol. Remember so, how disgusting some, it was they, when you like, might... have a sip of your parents' wine and it like tasted like poison? But, yeah, I remember that. But I remember also my little sister liked the taste of beer. Some babies like the taste of like beer or wine. Oh, yeah. You get a little whiskey on your finger and you stick it in the baby's mouth. I bet they don't like that. But maybe like an old-fashioned or a, <laughs> <laughs> or a, a gin Ricky. <laughs> a four-year-old drinking a Cosmo, <laughs> sipping on a, a martini they, while reading I mean, a newspaper. They definitely make drinks sweet enough for adults to like them. Yeah. You like your drinks super sweet sometimes. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure I can. Yeah, maybe I can. Not not anybody in my family, but uh, I would like to get an eight-year-old drunk. Oh, no. What? <laughs> this is so fucked up. <laughs> uh, all right. Do we have... Um, oh, wait. It's my turn. Yeah, it's your turn. My turn to ask you, answer, or ask you a question. Yeah. This one is from a dude. Okay. Uh, you got a name for him? Um, Tad Daly. <laughs> Because we do things a tad daily around here. I recently matched with this babe on Hinge. Hinge! And we arranged to get brunch together the next day. Brunch went well, and we decided to go back to my place to smoke. <laughs> we, ended <up> spending, <laughs> we ended up spending the whole day together. We went to the zoo, watched a movie, went to a party at night. She slept over. Fast forward a few days, we've hung out a f- two more times. Continue to have fun together, holding hands, kissing frequently, cuddling. I even went as far as to delete Tinder and Hinge from my phone as I don't see the need for them at the moment. Wow. This morning, however, I decided to re-download Hinge to see whether or not she was still active on it. Okay. <laughs> Lo and behold, she's still on there pretty much every few hours during the day. I could just delete Hinge again or unmatch her, but I'd sort of rather talk to her about it. What the fuck do I do here? This is really gutting me, but surely it's too early to ask her to delete or not use it. I could tell her that it makes me feel shitty that she's still on there, but I'm not sure what good that will do me. Aside from forcing an ultimatum, me or Hinge, what are my options here? Oh, man. Hinge. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard that word in a while. Is it just Hinge? <laughs> is it just Hinge? Um... Yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky conundrum. I mean, like there was no, what was the what, what was the motivation for him to delete it in the first place? Uh, I think th- this guy's moving way faster than her. He's like two dates in. I'm like, this is the one. I'm deleting this shit. Yeah, and then think... he like re-downloads it, and he's like, wait a minute, I'm not the one to her. I guess like it, it's fine with it's fine if you de- delete Hinge and you're like, oh, I really like this girl. I don't need to match anybody. But it is sort of an unreasonable expectation for you to uh, assume that she needs to be going at the same pace as you are. Yeah, I think of this as like cheating. So there's no rule. You can't say like don't cheat, and you can't say don't whatever. Uh, you can't. You have to de- delete it. You just have to be so good that the person actively chooses you over any but other partner. 
So if you're like a great guy, then she'll eventually down delete Hinge on her own volition. And yeah. it'll mean more because you didn't ask her to do it. You feel like you've never said to a girlfriend like, hey, by the way, one of the rules of <laughs> dating is that we don't cheat on each other. Yeah, I would never say that. Right. Yeah. You just sort of <laughs> assume that sort of that's yeah. like an unsaid one. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have to go over that in the intro date. We just assume that it's not good to cheat on other people. It's kind of the same rule as like uh, when I have to stop seeing other people. Yeah. Like if you're if it starts feeling where it's like, wow, I am legit in a relationship with this person, hopefully that other person feels the same way too and it's not like six months down the line and she's still dating others. Yeah. It, it, I mean like if it it's only been a few days a few dates, three dates. I mean these but these dates do sound kind of epic. Well, you know, they just they got brunch, got high, went to a zoo and a movie and a party. <laughs> And then, that's that describes four and a half weeks of a relationship. I don't know. Me. Yeah, I don't know when she has time to even go on Hinge right now. But she's unhinged. <gasps> Actually, when I was reading this, I took a note. I'm like, going to the zoo is probably a fun date, especially if you go stoned. Oh wow! Imagine what, seeing a fucking elephant high. What about like the elephant's high? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the eight year old that you brought is drunk. <laughs> uh. Uh yeah, so go so I gleaned from this you should go to a zoo. Uh, aside from that, yeah, um, it's a fun date. Uh, don't ask her to delete it. You can't ask her to delete it. Don't bring it up. It sounds I, like yeah, you've I wouldn't even say anything. I would not do a single thing about it. Just continue to be cool, uh, and then maybe she'll just delete it on her own. Yeah, on her own volition. And I feel like when you if you need to talk to her about it, you wouldn't want to frame it as like. So do you want to delete Hinge? Yeah. You want to say like, let's, should we, uh, should we stop seeing other people or dating other people? And I've like, you know what I've done is like, I've kept apps going longer in the background because it's like, oh, I'm not swiping, but at the same time, I don't want to deactivate yet. You yeah. know, like, cause there's something fun about like, what if I spend three months with this person and then I go back to the app and I got a whole pool of people that have swiped for the last three months. Oh, that's fun. And then. When you finally delete that, that's when it means a lot more because you're like, oh, shit, I'm really just turning my back on all these people. Yeah, that, I guess that's one of the hard things that uh, us millennials have to deal with. Right, especially if you meet someone on these apps, you know they're using it. Yeah, the, I got, the dating pool is so enormous. It really, it's hard to get out. <laughs> it's, it's the middle of the ocean, unfortunately. Yeah. And unless you've matched with a speedboat, there's no <laughs> end in sight. Uh, all right. The end. Next question. All right. Uh, by the way, did you hear Gabrus on Twinovation? No. It's one of my. It's the funniest. <laughs> it's so fucking good. That's out right now. Yeah, I just listened to it. If you guys have not heard John Gabrus guesting on Twinovation, it's like two of my favorite podcasts collided. Uh, I was so funny. I should also mention that I was on Barely Friending. I can't talk as glowingly about it because it's me. But uh, if you want to hear my voice talking about, I think we talked about casual sex on that as well. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Barely Friending episode 77 uh, with special guest me, Amir Shmuel. Shmooey uh, moo. So if you guys need DJ more moo in the house, if you guys need more podcast content, I'm going to listen to that to innovation tonight. Maybe while I'm uh, running my dishwasher. Oh, there you go. It really, God, it's so funny. They like, Gabrus is just the fucking quickest and <laughs> Dave is the dumbest. <laughs> so it's a match made in whatever the difference between hell and heaven is. Yeah. I mean, you just have to hear. And also, Gabrus had like never heard the show before. So, like, when Dave's <laughs> pitching, he's reading a manifesto off his phone. Gabrus is so confused. That's great. What the fuck are you doing? What is this? Is this Dave does this every week? <laughs> <laughs> Dave's just talking about the singularity and John is like I don't think you know what it is <laughs> it's true it is fun to like hear an outsider perspective on Twinovation because they have such a shared language and ecosystem that nobody dare question it yeah alright and also like somebody that's just like Gabrus that comes in has no interest in like trying to to like cater to their audience he's just like himself making fun of uh, Dave it's great alright Anyway, yeah, uh, this is coming from a 15-year-old boy. Oh. Yeah, what's his name? Diddly Did. Diddly Did. Diddly Did writes, I am a 15-year-old male turning 16 next April, and I have a sticky situation on my hands. I'm currently in my high school's 21 and under soccer team, and I'm thinking of 
quitting because of this shithead team captain. He's pretty good, while on the other hand, I'm not the best, and even though I know this myself, he keeps reminding me that I'm shit every time I see him. (laughs) As I've said, I know I'm not the best, but I'm definitely not the worst. Even my other teammates say I've been improved and that I'm not bad. He's even told other teammates that he would tell the coach to not have me start the games. I have a couple of years left in high school, then I'm off to college. I was wondering if I should quit the team and not deal with that shithead anymore, or should I push through and stay on the team? My reason for staying in the team is so that I have something on my CV. Do colleges even check sporting achievements? <laughs> is it important to have this on my CV? Please help me. Thanks in advance. Diddly did. All right. A lot of thoughts there. Number one, high school under 21 team. Who's on the high school over 21 team? Yeah, that person shouldn't be on the team. <laughs> uh, two, That's illegal. Uh I was thinking, if I was 15 now, would I listen to podcasts? Would Mm. you listen to podcasts? I probably, if I was 15, I don't know, like, did the 15-year-old version of me do things like listening to... Yeah. I guess I probably would have, because I was like watching funny internet videos and listening to like Adam Sandler CDs, CDs. Right. right? I liked comedy albums. Right, right, right. So yeah, if there was like a way for me to get more comedy, I probably would. We would be like comedy nerds listening to comedy podcasts. Yeah, I bet. Um, all right. So, and then what else? What else? This reminded me of is I remember two sports memories when I was around this age. Number one, I don't know if I ever talked about this, but it's a really funny story. There was when. And when I was in eighth grade, so when I was 14, there were basketball tryouts for middle school basketball. Uh, and there's only like 80 kids in my grade, but like half of the grade tried out. So there was like 40 dudes trying out. So the rule when middle school was, especially at my middle school, because it was a private Jewish middle school, is that if you wanted to play, you could play. They'll just make more teams. <laughs> so it was, there was the A team, the B team, the C team, and the fourth team was... <laughs> <laughs> the saddest name of all. Imagine something sadder than the D team. It's really low. <laughs> the, it, <laughs> it's so sad. Oh, and I was smart enough to know it. It was called the NBA team. <laughs> the NBA team. As if we were so bad they <laughs> to make us feel better. Wait, My there was after sh- the D team? There was no, the NBA? it was A team, B team, C, C team, team, and, and then the NBA, NBA team. <laughs> As if you are so dumb and bad at basketball. We're not even going to let you like legitimize you by saying you're a step below the C, C guys. Yeah. So I tried out, and I thought I did pretty well, but I, uh, when they started listing off the teams, A team, all my friends, B team, some of my friends, C team, not even me, D team, or sorry, NBA team, all the people who have pretty much never played basketball before, and me. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, my God, this is mortifying. Some of them are happy because they're on the fucking NBA team. But I have to, like, tell them, no, that's, it's patronizing. It's really bad, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kobe's blew in the, the NBA. It was a tryout. Uh, so I, I was in a situation where I'm like, this is kind of embarrassing. Maybe I should just quit. I don't want to play with all these people that never played basketball before. These scrubs. But I played. I stayed with it. It was actually really fun because they uh, – appropriately put me on the worst league, but I was the best player in the worst league. So compared to somebody that's never played basketball before, I was like <laughs> averaging 18 points a game because I can actually like oh, shoot. You could dunk all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt great to be the best player on the worst, saddest name team. Oh, man, uh, that's funny. So that one wasn't quite for college, but it did remind me, it reminded me or it gave me the idea to tell this guy to stick it out. Uh, because quitting is probably even sadder than getting made fun of while being on the team. Yeah. I mean, fuck this guy. I just, I, I had to answer this question because I had to say, fuck this team captain who's like picking on you. That's the opposite of what a team captain is supposed to do. Yeah, but you know, high school sports, it's all just, it's like the, a combination of every terrible hormonal douchebag yeah. asshole high, thing high happening school, at the same time high school sucks but i and I, the other thing i wanted to say is that he's only 15 like he might not have had its growth spurt yet you know like you are so tiny when you're 15 if yeah. you started if you like practice playing soccer and keep on playing for the next four years you will get a lot better it's it's also funny because when you said um he's only 15 i thought you were talking about the bully so it'd be funny to be like if this guy 
gave him a comeback. He's like, what the fuck are you being a bully for? You're only 15. Like, just start <laughs> acting like you're 33. <laughs> dude, you're so, like, you're picking on me. You're a fucking 15-year-old. 15, dude. Yeah, how old are you? I'm 15, too. I'm just I'm saying, saying. We're both 15. <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're all 15. Compared to adults, we're kind of losers. Actually, I'm fucking the uh, English teacher's wife. Really? Amazing. Jesus. How do you have a mustache already? I'm 33. I'm Are the coach. You? <laughs> you should be on the over 21 team then. Uh, all right. Do you want to answer one more question before mm-hmm. you have to go? I think you found three. I only found two. Oh, yeah. I have a third, I have a third and final question. Hell yeah. Uh, all right. This is from a gal. A gal. We'll call her Abraham Gal or a gal for short. Okay, a gal. So Abraham Gal writes, So I've managed to get myself into a bit of a situation. I broke up with my boyfriend a few months ago. No problems. It was very mutual, and we're still good friends. But when we broke up, the only rule he had was that I wasn't allowed to hook up with my best friend. My best friend and I have always been extremely close, and he has <laughs> always been fairly affectionate to me to the point that it sometimes used to annoy my boyfriend while we were together. But there was never anything between us romantically, so at the time of my breakup, I agreed, thinking it would never happen anyway. <laughs> Problematically, after my breakup, my relationship with my best friend began to change. We became closer, and our relationship became more sexually charged (gasps) in a way I had not anticipated. Oh, no, but she promised her ex. Since then, we've both (laughs) fucked a few times, and it's been fine. But we don't want any more than that. We definitely don't want to date each other and know we're better off just being friends. So I have two questions. One, how bad of a person am I for sleeping with my best friend when I promised my ex-boyfriend I wouldn't? (laughs) My best friend and ex are also very good friends, and it would completely fuck up the good friendship I have with my ex. Two, do I have to tell my ex-boyfriend this happened? Not many people know, and I don't think there's any way it will get back to him unless I tell him. I don't want to hurt him, but but I didn't mean for this to happen. Anyway, thanks, and sorry for the long email. Love your show. Big fan for years. Toda, Abraham girl. Mm, That's really funny. I love the idea of Abraham entering a pact after breaking up with someone. He's like, all right, you got to break. We'll break up, but you can't hook up with your old boyfriend. He's like, all right, fine. Done deal. <gasps> Shit. You don't get to make rules <laughs> posthumously. You don't, you don't even want to do rules in the relationship. <laughs> yeah, that shouldn't even be stated if you're still in the relationship, let alone after you break so, up. And it's so that happens all the time. Whenever you break up, there's just like a couple things that the person doesn't want to see you go and do. Yeah. And you, of course, everybody agrees agrees to these things but it doesn't it doesn't hold any water after the fucking fact yeah i don't even like the hey let's stay as friends thing and that's completely within the two people once you start bringing other people that guy never made a rule right it's so and you never like get hit up by somebody like a couple months later and they're saying you said we were gonna be friends yeah like oh well that's just something i said to not hurt your feelings (laughs) in the moment i thought we both knew yeah i didn't think we were off to play basketball together on saturday you know, shit that I do with my actual friends. Yeah. Ah, God. So, no, you don't owe your ex-boyfriend anything. The one stickiness is the fact that the ex is friends with this guy. Yeah. That's... So, he's like, it's kind of sad, but he's like, can you just not fuck my best friend? I just, I, can, I don't think I can live with that. I'm yeah. down to break up, but promise me you won't fuck my best friend. And that's, I, I guess... I would say that she probably shouldn't have fucked her ex's best friend. <laughs> That's like a little messy. That's a sticky. That's a little messy. But it is her best friend. Yeah, if it's, I guess like the three of you guys were best friends and you just fucking everybody. That's uh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, now the do you two think guys she has to tell fucked. the person? I think that she was allowed to do it. I think it's fine that it happened. I think it's more fucked up on the guy's behalf. Right. Like, if your ex-girlfriend fucked me, it w- you'd be more mad at me. Yeah, because you and I have the relationship yeah. that you should respect. <laughs> Her and I don't have any relationship that needs to be respected. It's a love triangle, but only two of the nodes are connected. Yeah. It's a love carrot. I guess, like, it's more up to your the guy that your best friend, the guy that you've been fucking, to tell your boyfriend. Yeah. Or ex-boyfriend. Or not tell him. Or not tell. But then it's a secret. I would rather that he knows, because it's definitely the kind of thing that you that he might find out, and it seems like the longer a secret's been kept, the more it hurts. Oh, I would say the opposite. Like, if you found out that I had slept with your ex-girlfriend eight years ago, you wouldn't be that mad. I guess I wouldn't be... No, I I wouldn't be like... Eight years ago is definitely... Yeah, that's that's different. <laughs> uh, but it it would probably eat at me a little bit. Right. 
but if you found out that I like you break up with someone today and I hook up with them tomorrow, that would hurt the most. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I think if I broke up with somebody eight years ago and you and I found out you started hooking up with them the day after, maybe I'd still be mad that you kept that secret for so long. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Um a friend hooking up with an ex? Huh. I don't think so. Tight. Yeah. Maybe it has. Not in like a meaningful way. I right. also have Almost never cared about an ex. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever hooked up with a friend's ex? Uh, I don't think so. Good dude. Maybe I have. I don't know. Baller dude. It's never. It, I've never done it in a way that's like come to a head that I can think of. Yes, dude. Yes, dude. <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody out there that's listening. It's like, you fucking asshole, Jake. <laughs> Not even me. <laughs> Broomhilda, eight foot four, 712 stones. I still love you. <laughs> uh, all right, that's it. Post Thanksgiving episode in the books. If you have your own questions, your own theme song submissions, please send that shit over to if I were you show at gmail.com. The opening theme song was written by Jesse Gold. The closing theme song is written by Lucas. Uh, what was your podcast recommendation again? Oh, uh, Twinovation. John yeah. Gabers from High and Mighty. Gabers on Twinovation, and uh, mine was me on Barely Friending. So check him out if you got some more time in your drive uh, and want to listen to more of us. Uh, highly recommend it. While you're washing your dishes. Wash that dish, bro. Uh, all right, we'll be back either Thursday or Monday. Bye. Ciao. Welcome to If I Were You. That was a HeadGum Podcast.